Thanks for tuning in to your day off podcast, hosted by your boys, Corey and Tony. I think by the end of today, I might have another best friend. They're committed to making you fall in love with the hair industry, one podcast at a time. Uh, you're going to grab a lot of information. Yeah, you're going to learn a lot. Presented by Hair Industry. Ladies and gentlemen, this is it. Your day off podcast will begin after a word from our sponsors. Hey, Tony, there's something that every solo entrepreneur needs to hear. If you're running your own show, you know how important branding and client management are. And speaking of making things easier for solopreneurs, let's talk about Schedulicity. It's designed to personalize your client interactions from start to finish. Schedulicity has some cool new features coming. You'll soon be able to customize your booking page, add your own logos, choose your colors, and really make it sing to your brand's personality. It's like giving your business a digital front door that looks and feels like you. Schedulicity isn't just about looking good. Schedulicity is designed to make everything smoother from booking to billing. You know, it's not just about the looks, it's about efficiency too. They've integrated something pretty slick, intake forms. Now clients can fill out all the details before they even step foot into the door. What's cool is these forms attach to the client's profile and update automatically for future appointments. Talk about saving time and starting on schedule. It's your schedule and your success all rolled into one. With all these tools from Schedulicity, you're not just running your business, you're growing it. And for all the solopreneurs and sweet owners out there, this is exactly the kind of support we need to stand out in a crowded market. Hey, welcome to your day off. My name is Corey, and of course, I'm sitting with my best friend, Tony. What's up, buddy? What's going on, brother? Nothing. Big shout out to uh, to ABS. We're in Chicago this weekend, and uh, we get to do a bunch of podcasts, and uh, it's always like, I love doing live podcasts. Uh, it's probably my favorite, you know, because not only we get to dig deeper with, with old friends, and we get to make new friends. Yeah, for sure. And that and that's what the, that's what the shows are about, right? Because everyone's in the same room, so it's just like you know, who are we going to meet with this weekend? Yeah, it's it's about networking, it's about connecting, it's about learning, it's it's all of that. It's all of that, and we get to bring it to the microphone. That's really cool. Um, yeah, so a uh, big shout out to uh, to Frank. They've uh, Frank Foco and his team, and they've done a great job. Uh, once again, the show is getting bigger and better every year. Um, it's certainly the energy was amazing on the floor today. What speaks volumes uh, is we've talked to to brand owners or brand managers, and uh, they're saying that how well they're doing uh, on the salon floor or the. Listen, I'm going to call someone out by name, and that's like we, we were talking to the guys from from our, and uh, to, it, we're recording this Saturday night, and they're sold out. They got two more days of shows, and they have no product, you yeah. know. So I mean that that says something. So you know from what they planned. And we've talked to the Ergo guys, and they're saying the same thing. They, yeah. they had record days. That's amazing. Yeah. I mean, that's, I mean, big, again, big shout out. If uh, if you ever get a chance to come to ABS in Chicago, you definitely should make it a and point. By the way, both those companies are uh, first class. Yes, completely. Completely. Um, uh, next up, uh, we, we have to uh, thank uh, Schedulicity. Schedulicity is sponsoring this weekend. Um, they brought us in so we could uh, so we can do what we can do. Um, Schedulicity is amazing. Uh, you'll hear us talk about it a lot from the bottom of our hearts. We just we just love that company. We love we love what they stand for and what they stand for for uh, hairdressers. Yeah, and you know, we've you know for the wow for the past five or six years five years we've uh we've used schedulicity in uh in our own suites mm-hmm. and um i can't praise them enough i mean the the team the everybody uh in that organization is is first class yeah the, the, there's no doubt about it and um it, it's how easy it's been as a suite owner to use it's like it's 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 your schedule equals your success right like if there's any like we've we've used other apps and like any kind of hiccup that was there or something that that impacts your business yeah and and if you do have any issues and, and you've heard us talk about this all the time on the podcast about yep. the rock stars uh it'll be dealt with and it would be dealt with 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 uh want they yeah, want yeah. to help you yeah th- there's no doubt about it the rock stars are the uh th- that's their customer service thing but um unfairly uh, i've mentioned this on each podcast because it's true uh, unfairly i judge every customer service experience to the rock stars of schedule listening because nobody comes close to it I don't, I don't understand you know if you're in any kind of role with customer service why the customer service does it sh- they should have the biggest budget it's not the smallest budget you know because they're the they're, they're the connection to 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 the ones that are paying you which so is weird if there's any other industry or any other people that have a customer uh, service team and they want 
to learn how to do it right, <laughs> call schedule. Call schedule. Yeah. That, that's really good. You know, the, <laughs> whoever the manager in there is, they should be doing like they should be doing podcasts and they should be doing like how tos about you know how to take care care of your uh, customer service department or customer service people. That's too funny. Uh, it's, it's true. It's so true. They should they. They need to market that or bring that down. So uh, what else is very cool? And we mentioned a little bit earlier is that we get to do live podcasts and we get to make new friends. And 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 although today's a little weird because I think we've chatted at least for a year now to try to bring you on. So today's actually happening. Our so, guest. So she was saying she's kind of an old friend and kind of a new friend, right? Kind, kind of Somewhere both. in the middle. Kind of both. Well, we've definitely shared a few drinks with her over the last couple <laughs> months. So And her husband yeah. <laughs> over the last couple months. So that's really good. So our guest today is Sana Bredo. And I think I nailed it. Did I get it? Nailed it. Nailed it. <laughs> nailed it. Uh, um, I always want to pronounce it with like this Irish, I mean, this uh, this Italian accent and make her sound like a gangster, like Luca Brasa. Right. You know, so <laughs> from then anyway, you'll get that. Um, so uh, our guest today is Sana Bredo, and uh, I, I just I, I, I've been waiting to talk to her for a couple of years. Or, or what is what does Jacob Khan call you? Sonia Brado. Sonia Brado. Kind so, of French. I know, right? Yes. So uh, Sona <laughs> Brado, welcome to the podcast. Well, thank you very much, uh, Cody. <laughs> <Yeah>! <laughs> 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 Way uh, to go. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we can't remember each other's names. It's no, no, okay. it's all good. We, I know who you are now. Yeah, Corey. Yeah. Cody. <laughs> Corey. <laughs> forever Cody. Where's your husband? Where's uh, where's forever, your husband? forever Cody. He has forever a nephew Cody. named Cody. Yeah, I do. Got a, nephew na- got a nephew named Cody, and you're forever Cody. That'll be it. That's so awesome. funny. Welcome to the show. Thank you. I'm really happy to be here. I know you are crazy busy. We see you on the oh, floor. Yes. You're constantly, you know, Doing something, you're running around and, and you're on stage cutting and uh, and and by the way, I'm a fan. I'm a cutter and I and I, I do watch your work and I, it's beautiful and Thank you. you know I appreciate your your craft. Thank you. I love hair cutting. I mean, if I had to choose between color and cutting, which I finally did, it's cutting. Yeah. Even though I love the I love the combination, but cutting is where my heart is. Awesome. What yeah. do you think it is about it? Well, I don't know. Um, when I kind of came to this realization, it was when I was thinking about, do I cut to accent my color or do I color to accent my cut? And I definitely color to accent a cut. So I'm, for me, the cut is everything. And it's, I think it stems mostly from when I was growing up. And my, um, my whole family, we were all in 4-H, if you know what 4-H is. Yeah, sure. You know, head, heart, hands, health, and they have farm animals and sew. So my family was, um, everybody sewed in my family. And there were pattern pieces always around. And the pattern pieces really kind of translated into what I do now. And I always look at the skull shape, the fabric of the hair. I consider the hair to be a growing garment. And so it just is kind of... It's kind of cool to look at it in that way, and I'm much more of a structural um, hairdresser than I am maybe a colorist and a freeform hairstylist, I, if that makes sense. It makes total sense for me, I, and I watch you. And it, but, you but even though it's, it's structure, um, I mean, I watch you switch between your shears and your razor. You make mm-hmm. it look so almost like a dance, you know what I mean? It's yeah. so elegant. It's so pretty to watch you cut, and uh, uh, again, you know, where, first of all, let's, let's wind back a little bit. How did you get in the industry at all, for first place? Okay, so I was in high school, and you know how a lot of people go to um, vocational school, okay? So I didn't go for hair, I went for cooking, but there was always a hairstylist there, and so that always intrigued me, and I got out of school, and my parents came into the, um, the restaurant I was working at, and they said, we'll put you through cosmetology school if you want to go. I had never mentioned anything about it. I'd never had any interest in doing it. As a matter of fact, I used to hate going to the hairdresser because they never did what you wanted, number one, and they smoked. It was back when you could smoke, and they would smoke and put their cigarette down right on the, you know, right in front of you on the station. It's in your face, and there's perm solution. And so, um, Oh, the good old days of hairdressing. The good old days, (laughs) yes. The money days when you smelled perm solution, it meant money. Right, you know, that's, right what exactly. about. that's what we said. Um, so my parents are the ones that actually got me into hairdressing. And my mom always would say, that is the best, get this, $1,400 I've ever spent. Oh, snap. That's hilarious. Yeah. yeah. Wow. That's how much it costs. Hold up, Hold on. <laughs> So, does your cooking suck? Is, is that you why they what? offered up cosmetology my, my school? Hus- right. My husband, Mark, does all the cooking. He's an amazing cook. That's hilarious. So, yeah. It's, yeah. I make bread. 
<laughs> but bread's tough. Yeah. And, yeah. and during COVID, I, I developed um, a sourdough starter. So, oh. yeah, I use that. But that's, yeah. Did you ever post about that? I did. Yeah, a little bit in my stories. I think I saw that. Yeah, beautiful. I probably said it was like, bring me some starter, kid. <laughs> I could bring you some starter. You can dehydrate it. Really? Freeze it. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah. Yeah, and oh, then reactivate it. Really? That's pretty cool. Yeah. Did you know that? I did. I thought it was just a living thing. Well, it is, but you can like well, put, it, right. put it in uh, what is it stasis or that cryogenic t- chamber or something. You give a little CPR and it bounces right back <laughs> <Exactly>. up. <laughs> Bump it back out. <laughs> that's that's awesome. Where um you were talking about 4-H and stuff? Where'd you grow up? I grew up in Bremerton, Washington. So up in the Pacific Northwest. I'm a diehard PNW girl. Love it up there. Love the mountains, the water. Um, so, yeah, I grew up there, and um, I still live in that area. I'm in Spokane, Washington now, so oh, just no. across the state. I hear I can't. it's beautiful. I've never been to the Pacific. Gorgeous. Uh, yeah. yeah. The PNW? Nope. I've never been to the PNW. PNW. I can't. I can't. We're, you know, we're good friends with Presley, who lives in mm-hmm. Portland, and I just, I can't imagine, like, I can't imagine being a traveling artist and coming from there, because nothing's easy. Talk to me. Yeah. Mm-hmm. especially from Spokane, at least with Portland, it's a little bit bigger um, airport. Spokane is a very small um, airport. And so it, it takes me forever. Like I went to Quebec City this last weekend and came from there to here to do the show. And it took me, I, I don't even know how many hours. It was like I left at six in the morning. I got in at 11 at night there. What? Oh my gosh. Yeah. Two different airlines. I mean, it's just like all over the place. That's so, so crazy. Yeah, It's a lot of work. And I travel probably... Three or four weekends a month, and it's almost all on the East Coast. That's crazy. I, I thought I, I think get people like you that are are traveling like that that you should only live in like the mountain time zone, right? Like everything's right. That, you know like or Denver, Kansas City, mm-hmm. Minneapolis, you know, kind of like those areas that have like big metro airports, but can dance around a little yeah. bit. Or Dallas, maybe Dallas, pretty easy, right? That would be pretty easy. Yeah, yeah. but I, I fly Delta, so you know, well, you got your hubs, your Salt Lake City and uh, Atlanta. Well, first off, I love Salt Lake City. I know. I awesome. would like, I'm trying to convince my, I've, listen, I've only been to Utah like in the fall and the summer. I, I think I should probably get there in the winter, but I just love you need that. To go in the winter. <laughs> What'd you say? <laughs> you need to go in the winter. Yeah. It's really pretty. Well, I know it's pretty, but could I tolerate it? You know, like I love that city. I mean, I love that Southern state. Utah, they, they don't get any uh, St. Any George? Snow. Yeah. They get like a, like, uh, I checked it out in January. They might get a, like a, a half an inch, if any, if that. Of snow? For the whole month. Yeah. If I went to St. George, I could like uh, I could pick up a second wife too. I think <laughs> <laughs> that just get in trouble. Yep. Yeah, you get yeah. in trouble. <laughs> well, you pick up a second <laughs> wife, you'll still end up with well, one. Well, it depends <laughs> on if you're Cody or Corey, though. Right. <laughs> Actually, that's funny because isn't there that show? His, and his, and name, and is his name is Cody. Oh, yeah. Was it? Yeah, oh gosh, he like he has like multiple wives or it's something. Called sister wives, sister wives, and his okay, and, so, and his name is Cody. And yeah, the, and the, you've, you've and the got patriarch. Your yeah, jeez, <laughs> Sonny, you're killing me now. He walked into yeah. it. Yeah, I sure did. I sure did. That's cool. How many shows a year do you do? Um, big shows. I, I work. For, I'm a global art, artist for KMS, and mm-hmm. so I work with them. And there's actually a show going on in Vegas right now that I wasn't able to do because I'm here. So that's where my friend Jacob is. Um, we usually do the cutting room together. Mm-hmm. Um, and I do, um, like ABS, I do the four or five on tours that um, the Cal Corporation puts on, Cal Global, um, Cal Creative Experience is what they call it now. Mm-hmm. And so I do a lot of that, but I do a ton of in-salon classes and my own events where I do like a regional class, sell tickets and whatnot. How have you done with the regional classes? Like, you mean like in like the Pacific Northwest? Well, no, I'm actually, I do them like I'm doing one at Jacob's Salon in August, uh-huh. in July. I'm up in Cleveland in August. I'm in Oklahoma City oh, in, um, in May, coming up. So coming up next month, doing a two-day, like a hands-on, a look and learn first day, where I'm taking some models through that whole design process that I work with, <clears throat> working with the facial, facial structure, um, skull shape you know, just customizing a look for them. Mm-hmm. Um, and so then I do that, and then we could do, like, three cuts the next day where I go through all my theory and, you know, how to how to customize cuts for people. That's crazy. I mean, that's yeah. thinking about the amount of travel, the amount of time spent uh, in and out of Spokane, <laughs> like that <laughs> airport. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, Mark, Mark drops me off, and he's like, okay, see you. See you in, in a few days. Is, he's like, this is deja vu. I do this every, you know, every weekend. Is he in the industry as well? 
Well, we owned a salon together for 35 years of our oh, marriage. Wow. Yeah. So he's definitely in the industry and now he runs our um, serious beauty and the angel blades and all of that. So my scissors. So he's, he's in the industry, but not, he's like a beauty school dropout. Right. Beauty school dropout. Beauty school dropout. How yes. did you guys meet? Um, we were in the same city and I was actually, um, I bought a little salon. So it was like a two chair salon and is in a college town named uh, Cheney, right outside of Spokane. He was going to school there and I was his hairdresser. And we got married just a couple of years later. So I'd purchased this small salon and he looked at it and this is a funny story. So he looked at it and he's like, okay, you know, this is cool. And I like that she cuts my hair and whatnot. And then he like found about $10,000 in the closet because that's where I would put the sure. money yeah. right. and the checks. In the shoebox. Yeah, yeah, yes. Exactly. yes, and so I would just collect it and whenever I needed money, I would just go and I would get money. It was easier than going to the bank. Sure. And so it was he, your bank, let's be honest. It was my bank, yes. And so it was a safety deposit box. <laughs> <laughs> safety deposit shoebox. Yes, shoebox. And so um, he's like, okay, I think we can make this a business. And so um, he decided to go to school, cosmetology school, because we thought we would do that. And um, at that point, we were moving the salon from Cheney to Spokane. So it was a little college town, really hop, and we did all sorts of like shows and dorm talks. And I mean, just it was always fun. Cut hair, you know, barefoot in our swimsuits. <laughs> nice. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It was. It was uh, just. It was crazy. I had my dog in the salon. We had yes. to turn down the music to um, answer the phone. Right. We would hide <laughs> from the UPS man. I mean, we were just, you know, young kids. I was 21 years old. And so we, um, we moved the salon. And at that point, he was like, I can either keep working and keep going to school and we can work together. And, you know, if you're really small, you can make a lot of money, you know, yeah. as, a, as a team. Or we can get bigger and expand the salon and hire people. And so we went that route. And we had a large salon, ran um, apprenticeship programs and had training, which is where my my love of teaching comes from, is just really helping people to understand and have those aha moments. Oh, beautiful. Do you, um, I, get, I get the small salon to the big salon, but, you know, I, I think the one thing that you don't take into account is also the headaches and all the all, all the people at yeah. the big salon. At least when it's small and you're making, you're like, hey, we're making a pretty good living here. Mm -hmm. You know, then once you make transition to a big salon, now yeah. now it's not just a big salon. It's it's big. It's, it's bigger problems. It's yeah. bigger. It's all yeah. that. It's it's its own animal. And it needs to be treated as like a separate entity. It's not like we own the salon. It's like the salon is its own entity. And we, we were up to about 29 stylists at one point. Whoa. So, you know, it's, it was a, a big a big thing. Managers, front desk manager. Um, and it's like you, you get to a certain point. And it's, it's like you could be small and make as much money as you're making because you're paying so much in taxes. And you know, just all the you know, staff meeting Stuff, that yeah. costs how much to buy coffees for everybody. You know, just all the right. things. And... Um, we, we, we kept it going for quite a while. We just recently sold it, so about two years ago. What's your management style? My management style, um, <laughs> Mark would always say, she's the hard ass, mm -hmm. and I'm the softy, but he always comes across as it. And I'm like, oh, you know. <laughs> Right. But really, I'm like, get rid of them, fire them. <laughs> them. Don't get, you know, if we don't want them now, we're not going to want them five years from now. Mm -hmm. So so my management style would be, um, I would have to say, kind of like talking things through. I, I really like, okay, an example would be if there's a conflict between people, I don't want that in my salon. Mm -hmm. I don't. I just don't deal with it. I'm like, okay, let's put them both in the same room. I'll be a mediator. You say what you need to say. You know, let's clear this up. Let's put the boxing gloves on. Yeah, yeah, just... Let's get it done, and yeah. You made it sound like Mark was the hit man. Like you would like you would, <laughs> you, would, you you would put the hit, and he would go ahead and, and he would he would do the hit. Yeah, do yeah. exactly. Yeah, I I orchestrate it. Yeah, yeah. That's when she's Sonobrata. Yeah, Sonobrata, Sonia Brada, Sonia Brada, Sonia Brada. Sonia Brado. Sonia Brado. Sonia Brado. That's hilarious. <laughs> oh my gosh, that's great. Oh man. So all right. So you you just recently sold the salon. Mm -hmm. Have you been? Um, how long have you been with KMS or in, in educating outside since, uh, were you doing it with the, while you had the salon? Or? Oh, yes. Yeah, I've been an educator for about, I'd say, 30 years. Whoa. Yeah, I worked with Sam Bercato. You know Sam? Oh, yeah. Sam. Yeah, he's one of, my, one of my biggest mentors. I worked with him um, a good, I'd say, 10 years, did shows with him. Did you, did you work with him? 
I guess it must have been the earlier mid nineties mm-hmm. when they had. Do you remember they had the? Um, it ended up being a bust, but it, uh, the concept was brilliant. Where they had the uh, the shampoo bottle. bottle. Yes. Yes. Oh my gosh! Yeah. You know how many of those exploded in my shower? Oh, but it, what a great idea! I mean, he was yeah. he's always been ahead of his time. Yeah. You always. know, I think we may have met because we worked with Sam um, mm-hmm. in the DC area for okay. for. I mean, for a long time. Um, yeah. were, you, we, were you Cody back then? <laughs> 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 we worked with a guy named um, Reg Laws. Oh, yeah. Reggie. And then, um, and so, uh, Bricado was in there. And then, Kevin, what's his name? The guy that worked for Sam and then went to Bricado before he went back to England. Jason. Uh, Jason. Stanton. Yeah. Stanton. That's yep. it. You Jason nailed it. Stan- yep. Air fives. Good pull. Boom. Yep. Boom. Yeah. So Jason worked with us a lot. Um, you know, Reggie brought him over from from the UK, and then he went to San Bricado, and then he went mm-hmm. back home. Um, yeah. With because uh, his son, I think. I think he was like really missing his kid, or at least that was the excuse. Oh. Who knows what it was? Yeah. I mean, I've seen a lot of stuff, so who knows what he it was? He was an awesome guy. We we loved him. He was just a great human being. Mm-hmm. Yeah. For Sam? sure. Sam. Sam and yeah. and Sam Jason. Jason. Okay. Jason. Yeah. Like yeah, yeah. Which one? Yeah, I mean, we knew we knew Sam like kind of through Jason and kind of like him popping in and stuff. Um, but yeah, we got to get really close with with Jason and you know all that all that stuff. Yeah, you know? that was cool. That's cool. Yeah. That's cool. Kind of yeah, small th- world, right? Yeah, kind yeah. of small world. Yeah, I was with um, with Sam for quite a few years, and I was um, an edu- educator for TG. So oh, yeah. I did a lot with TG and got the opportunity to work on stage with some of those guys and. Was, was great and Guy Muscolo and yeah, yeah. I miss Morrison. those guys yeah. you know yeah, yeah. I yeah, miss we, the energy that they brought we had a uh, 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 TG uh, East Coast ambassador uh, he would, uh, Sean Stredwick he did a lot of work with TG on the, on the East yeah. Coast and uh, he was uh, in our in our salon and uh, he, he brought a lot of that training back yeah back with great us. training yeah I yeah. mean just a solid foundation it really made it easy to understand I felt like with that I, I finally was able to have the words to describe what I was Ooh, doing that's yeah. really good I had I had the language and that's where things really clicked into place for me yeah, yeah. I, it, it was funny because like it I remember being back in the 90s where uh, the new collection would come out. It was, it was so, like, over the top. And it's just like, you know, it was yeah. Yeah, something else. The, the, the two people in those days that, like, uh, that was inspiring was you, pretty much anything a Tony and Guy did. And then Robert Labetta. Whenever oh, you watch uh, Robert yes. Labetta, you're like, oh, my. Not, by the way, there's way more than two. But those are the ones that stand out in my mm-hmm. brain right now. Yeah. You know, like Robert, like, especially when he uh, teamed up with um, Sebastian mm-hmm. and did the whole extra line. We, yep. we saw him mm-hmm. and we're like, what is this? It was like just like we're, so in Philly. We went to the one of the shows in Philly that he did with the. I feel like you were in a circus, but with yeah. hair. Yeah, he fun. is a circus. Yeah, yeah. 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 The, but the mind to create that. Yeah, it's like just crazy. It was beautiful. It's crazy. Yeah. It, it was like a really, really cool time for hairdressing. It was. You know, I also think it was, it was. I think the industry was kind of finding their way again because I think it was. It was about a maybe a full or three quarters of a generation past Vidal Sassoon and the impact mm-hmm. that he made, and then Trevor came in and Trevor, you oh, know, God. like yeah. just just elegance, yeah, you know, just the create creativity, just the creativity, yeah. and then um, and then Robert and it kind of it's to me at least from my memory like Robert and and um, Tony and Guy kind of showed up at the same time and they were kind of like doing the stuff that was like so outside of what we had right. seen the uh, the last half generation you know yeah. it was just it was like it was exciting it was, you know what it was it was rock and roll it was yeah. total rock and roll yeah. you know it was rock and roll yeah. and uh and and trevor was doing jazz you know and it was yes. it was beautiful like yeah. this beautiful kind of kind of thing um it was jazz and then and then the boys with the guitar showed up mm-hmm. you know yeah it was an exciting exciting it was time a really exciting time and i think we're we're kind of hitting another exciting time you know delving into like the AI and some things that are, are that are happening there. So how do you think that'll impact the industry? I think that if we use it for creativity, that it's going to really enhance what we do. Um, I heard a quote the other day and it was, you won't be replaced by AI, you'll be replaced by someone using AI. Yeah. You know, mm-hmm. so it's, it's kind of something that's coming in tandem with us. So I mean, it like, the show that I did earlier with Social Art House, it was all about um, AI. It was AI into human, or human into AI, and then AI back into human was the whole concept. And um, you guys probably weren't there because you were doing the podcast. Yeah, exactly. We yeah. tried to get down there, man. We were like yeah. itching. And yeah. then, to be honest, after the podcast, someone grabbed our attention. And I'm, I'm like, my feet are facing out the door, but we just yeah, couldn't make the break. Exactly. Yeah. 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 No, uh, Whitney was in yesterday talking to, to us yes. a, bit, a little bit yesterday. I was like, I want to be a part of that. And then yeah. Jay's been talking about it for a couple of days, you know, yep. Jay Ladner, yeah. um, talking about how cool it's going to be. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, I, I wish we had seen it. Well, 
Can I just yeah, please. Can I please. Opening? Because yeah. I, I told yeah, yeah, yeah. you that my microphone wasn't on. Oh, so on. this was the one when your mic wasn't on? <laughs> yes. Oh, that sucks. Yeah. Well, it came on like after, but it was I was the first one out, and I wanted to be because I was building something on my model. But okay, so I wa- asked for a model that was bald. Okay, I wanted her to have no hair or like number one, you know, right. nothing there. And so I got this beautiful, beautiful girl, Rosa. And um, so I cut this wig that went on her, and it was like kind of an Aeon Flux type of feeling, you know, points out to the front, a real sharp V. She had this um, metal metal face, metal chain. And so, of course, really tall and kind of like just very thin. And so she sits down in the chair, and I say to the audience, to nobody that can hear because they can't hear me, but what I said was, AI can create beautiful things. AI can do amazing things, but AI will never be or replace the human connection that takes our clients through the transitions of their lives. Mm. And at that point, I had my clippers. I pick my clippers up, and I catch the, the um, corner on her wig, and I pull it off, and uh, she's bald underneath. Whoa. And she falls forward, and co- she touches her head and falls forward and covers her head. And that's when the microphone came on. <laughs> oh. So everybody missed the whole thing. The whole uh, missed the, speaking of transition, missed the whole transition. We missed the transition. And um, so then, then I took um, just tape in extensions, and I just taped in. They were cut, and I just taped them all over her head to create a new look. Wow, that's yeah. beautiful. It was, it was cool. That, that is cool. very cool. Yeah, I mean, and you're right. AI is not going to be able to replace no. that, that connection. human connection. No, no, it can't. I mean, from what, their first date – their wedding, right. their graduation, their marriage, their divorce, their marriage. Their kids. Their kids. Yep. Mm-hmm. I mean, yeah. we're there through it all. Yeah. And the, the thing that unites us, the bond that unites us, is the fabric of the hair. Yeah. Mm. But uh, where AI can help in creativity is that, you know, like you have bits and pieces of an idea. You can say, you know, help me create this these bits and pieces, and they can help show you a design that you can now c- maybe go out and create yeah. yourself. Yeah. You know, so it is a... a can be a powerful tool to, to help the creative. Yeah. And yeah. the video that they put together at the beginning was, oh my gosh. If you haven't seen it, you have to see it. Oh, how do we see it? It's beautiful. And it's beautiful. Maybe I can ask Marlene. Yeah, talk to, to Marlene. Yeah. Social yeah. Art House. Or, or if Whitney has something. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. That's cool. It, it's really cool what Marlene's doing. Like, mm-hmm. I, I like this idea of Social Art House. Um, you know, I think that, and I, you know, I've only been around as long as I've been around, but I've never really heard of like a, a organization, company, whatever, representing the artist. Mm-hmm. You know, in the industry, so I kind of find that yeah. fast. Not that I kind of I do find that fascinating. Yeah. And we're going to talk to Marlene about it, but I think it's really cool. And I think it's really cool the artists that she has brought together. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, it's like powerhouses, you know. Yeah, and we were talking after the show, and or I can't remember if it was her or Justine who works with her. Yeah. Um, that it was so nice because everyone was just doing their work and being very creative, very respectful of everybody else. There was no drama in the back room, you know, in the in the yeah. break room type of thing and everybody was just helping out it was it was nice and all the artists were great to work with it's a good bunch it is at least least the ones the the, the one that we i mean we know a lot of them but you know from the ones we know it's just it's just a really good bunch yeah you know what 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 do you where do you kind of see the industry you know aside from ai but just like Mm -hmm. what we're doing where are we going hmm it's I don't know. It's hard to say because I, I feel like we're moving back. You know, like we, we moved into a lot of suites, um, a lot of uh, disconnection through COVID and, and all of that. And I feel like people are kind of coming back together, maybe in a different way. Mm-hmm. But I feel like people are wanting community again. I mean, I think it shows in how many people were here, are here at the show, um, yeah. all the education, the classrooms, because people went through this time frame where they could not... Um, learn in person Mm -hmm. and I think that that's a big deal learning in person is different than learning online even though there's so many great online things I've got an online you know membership but that one-on-one the hands-on someone looking at the way you're holding your scissors the where your shoulders are squared up to and your hips why am I always long on one side well Mm -hmm. it's your shoulders your hips and your feet more than anything and so I think that we're going to see a return to like a lot of in-person classes, a lot of education, and maybe more communities, but in maybe a different way than our traditional salons. I think that Mm -hmm. those are still valid and will still and always be there because that's our our training ground, isn't it? Sure. Where we develop and grow as stylists. I I see that we're kind of coming together 
And I think we lost it for a lot of years. I think that, that the industry has been so brand dictated mm-hmm. that like that that there wasn't there wasn't hairstylists connecting as hairstylists. It was connecting like, oh, I'm on team Redkin or right. I'm in team yes. Weller or I'm in team X or whatever. Um and I think what's happened in or what we're seeing at least is, is hairdressers communicating as hairdressers and it doesn't matter what team or what tribe you're on i mean there's still the tribe stuff because we deal with that a lot as well um but but i think i think generally speaking like we're just let's just be hairdressers and be you know friendly and and hairdresser family you know as opposed to like you know having big brother kind of overlook who we can talk to and who we can't yeah and if you think about it it's kind of like how how salons used to be you know you would not want like your client going to another salon and heaven forbid that a stylist from another salon walked in your doors or you wouldn't go to classes together. And now I feel like there's just so much more community that the walls are kind of down and it would be relating to the same, you know, thing that you're talking about with different brands Mm -hmm. and people really communicating and being okay, being together that we, maybe we don't need to be so, rigid in our brands or in our salons we can there's enough to go around yeah I, i've seen salon host education and other salons and other hairdressers around that that area attend mm-hmm. you know what i mean which is nice yes. so you're opening up your doors for other people and yep. and and for all for the sake of learning yeah i see that a lot and when i go in and i do classes for salons they they will invite other people in and i always love that yeah yeah that's how we always were we yeah. never we ne- were always like come you know come yeah of course we did a show last week and and the the theme was community over competition i love that yeah yeah, yeah that's good and yeah. it, and it was like we it wasn't we didn't just say it we lived it yeah. you know it, it, it was a really cool space with um people really appreciating that mm-hmm. you know where it wasn't it was about let, let's love you know let's yep. do that yeah so, so you you have a share company yes i do yeah, let's talk about it, it. okay called Angel Blades, and I developed the name. them. Yeah, Angel Blades, and they're the white scissors that you probably you probably see me sure. with them on Instagram, and I developed them during COVID. So my Instagram kind of took off. People were asking, "What scissors are you using?" And at that time, it was um, some from Moto. And I don't know if you guys know Aaron at Moto, um, but it, he helped us get kind of started with it. And then we needed a kind of a bigger ban- manufacturing um, deal, so we kind of moved, you know, shifted a little bit there. But um, I We call those good problems. Yeah, it was good problem. Good problem. Um, I wanted something that connected me in a new way to the hairstylist. And I was doing a lot of technique, and so I wanted a scissor that I felt really good about and was working with to represent the techniques. And so I developed the angel blades, and they're a Japanese molybdenum steel. <laughs> they're cryogenically tempered, um, and they're made in Japan. So they they have a really nice weight to them. I like a it's a, they're what I like, you know. Right, right. Um, and they have a nice weight to them. They move through the hair really nicely. We have a great sharpening company, but mostly I wanted something that. When they learn the techniques, when, when stylists learn the techniques, that they would have the tools to be able to do them the way that I do them. Sure, of course. So. I love, pretty, yeah, I, I would love being a hair cutter. I would love to stop by and uh, check them out. Please do. Uh, and I do a lot of uh, like sliding and slicing, so they just glide through the hair. And just, yeah, and I have ones called um, their carbon slides. They're the dry cutting scissor. Oh, yeah. but they're, I, they just are like butter. Yeah. Butter, butter, because you know, it, and then they make a difference. Because a lot of times you, you'll get these shears, and you can feel the pull, and you know, like ooh, you know what I mean. Uh, but I can you, feel the pull too when he's cutting my hair. I'm like, <laughs> ah, ah. but when you but when you get those shears that just glide, just yeah. like uh, like what, like butter, butter, butter. butter. Yeah. sana butter. Oh yeah, oh my God. Uh-oh. Right. yeah. Right. I'm thinking. <laughs> Good thing uh, nothing rhymes with Cody. <laughs> 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 At least what? of all, Corey. Right. <laughs> <laughs> At least of all, Corey. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Um, KMS used to have this product. Let me know if it's still around. Called Finish. Do you remember Finish? I do not remember. it. They don't have it anymore. Well, it was around. It, it's been a long time yes, since I used it. But it was a. Um, it was like a clarifier, and it smelled like tangerines but it also made the hair yeah, it was crazy um it made the hair feel like almost like it was like deep condition but it was actually a clarifier like it didn't give you you know like clarifiers give like the, that like rough thing it, it made the hair feel like 
Sona Bada. Uh, <laughs> yeah. KMS has been around a long time. I, I, I remember the yellow and black packaging. Oh, yeah. yeah. Way back when. Yeah, back exactly. When. Yeah, their whole, um, they've always been about sustainability. They, it was kind of back in the day when they went with a science kind of a of vibe, you know, with the molecular structure on the bottles. Sure. And Aveda went natural. Right, yeah, sure. Yeah, and tell me yeah. what happened there, right? <laughs> right? But their, their whole sustainability thing now has come um, full circle. They are actually PETA approved now. Oh, really? Really? Yeah. Do they have the little bunny on it? Yep. They have the little bunny on As it? They're, they're doing kind of a re... Um, Repack? Not a, not a repackaging, because it's the same packaging. They're adding, like, the bunny, though. But, 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 but kudos to to um, products that do that, because it's a very expensive cost oh. to get that label. So to do that, and, and it's a very vigorous, uh, they, they'll test it every which way to make sure each ingredient, they'll make sure they'll follow that path to make sure that it's mm-hmm. PETA approved. So, yes. um, and it can't just be one product. That's what I was going to say. It has to be entire line. line. Yeah. 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 Yeah, and, and that's and, and at least back in the day, KMS had a, a lot of SKUs. Do they used to have a lot of they SKUs? They still have quite a few SKUs. Yeah. 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 So I mean, just to think about that, you know, yeah. it's like how many how many how many ingredients are in there that have to follow that same that same path? Yeah. Every single ingredient has to be uh, pedo approved. I mean, it's it's insane. Yeah. And you yeah. know how many ingredients that oh. goes in to make a product? So uh, a lot. K- kudos. I mean, that my hat's off. That's uh, that's very impressive. It's a commitment. Very few products have that label, a little bunny label. Yeah. 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 You know, that's pretty, that's pretty awesome. Yeah, and I got a whole new respect for KMS. There you well, go. Yeah. Bring, bring yeah. 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 I actually, not to shit on KMS, I just haven't, for whatever, our market is so like Redkin, like Redkin and, and, right. and Kevin Murphy saturated. Like it's, it's hard to find any other, you know, or we have a lot of Wella too, but you know what I mean? Like, it, it, like some of the other brands, it's kind of hard to kind of like break it. And we are such a Cosmo a uh, uh, salon centric area, you know well, we have Cosmo very Prof? few. Yeah, yeah, they're well. Depends on the area, though. Mm-hmm. They carry it in our area. I'm not Cosmo sure if they're Prof. in our. I have, to, I have to check. I have to check the shelves. Yeah. I get overwhelmed. I mean, I, it's just always been a great line. It's always Agreed. there. You know, yeah. it, it does what it says it's going to do. The products perform. Um, people, it has a great um, customer retention for the client retention for you know purchasing. They always come back. Like I said, I'm missing a product from 30 years ago. I'm like, where's that product? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah but I've been with them for about 15 years now. Yeah. So kind of rounding out my, my education story there. Right. So, yeah, and I do the, the shows with them. And um, actually, this last year, I had the opportunity to work on a team, um, the Synergy um, team program, Synergy P- Stylists, mm-hmm. um, for Cal Corporation. So Goldwell had their cutting program called the Master Stylist Program, um, and then KMS had the IQ cutting program. And we have the beautiful academy in New York in the meatpacking district. And there's mm-hmm. one in Toronto. And so what they did was they brought six artists together. And we took the best of both worlds um, from both of those programs. We recreated a new program. And it's called Synergy. And so the whole thing now, um, they have one cutting program and styling program. So there's actually a finishing program that blew my mind. Wow. Yeah. Because, I, I mean, you think, okay, I'm going to go learn like some styling. I know how to style hair. Mm -hmm. But I walked away, because I did the pilot program, I walked away thinking, oh my gosh, how did, how did my mind just get blown from blow drying? Mm. Where do you find this? This you can find at the Cow Salon Academies in New York and in Toronto and Australia. Is that C-A-L? Cow Salon? Cow, K-A-O. K-A-O, okay. It's Cow Cow, Cow Corporation is out of um, Japan. They're Japanese... Corporation, yeah. They, they, we, when you said that, I, then everything yeah. you know, everything yeah. dawned on me there. Who uh, we talked about this um, all weekend about you know you can cut hair and everything, but when you learn how to finish, it just takes it yeah. to a whole new level. Yeah, I always say you can like create a beautiful haircut with a good finish, and you can destroy a beautiful haircut with a good finish. Yeah, mm. with a bad finish. With a bad finish. Yeah, bad yeah. finish. So, yeah. so they have an academy up in New York that you. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's right in the Meatpacking District. Um, we always stay at the Gansevoort, which is a you know swanky little hotel, <laughs> and it's gorgeous. They're just adding a new floor to it, so there'll actually be four floors for education. So it's under that cow umbrella. There's uh, Goldwell Dual Dual Senses, which is their wet line, Carousilk, which is beautiful, yeah. uh, KMS, and Orbe. Mm. That's a good. That's a good group of. Uh, that's yes, a good group is. of uh, products there. We might have yeah. to go 
Why don't you go to New York and visit? Uh, yeah. yeah, absolutely. And listen, I don't need much more of an excuse to go to New York. You know, I right. show up there whenever. You know, <laughs> you spend any time there? I go there a lot. Mm. Last time I was there um, teaching, I actually. Well, actually, no, it was for the Hairbrained. It was Hairbrained Awards. Yeah, it was Hairbrained Awards, which was so much fun. Oh Wasn't gosh. that a great party? It was so great. Yeah. It, it was, was so great. cool because it was, like, filled with a lot of familiar faces, mm-hmm. but it was everybody was there just to have fun. There was no ego. There was no yeah. anything. We just, we had a blast there. Yeah. You know? I think the, the day of the ego is gone. I just, I don't see it that much anymore. I have a theory. Nice. What's your theory? Um, Let me ask you the questions. You can please, please. You know, uh, my theory is is that um, you know we brought up Redkin and we brought up Wellen for years and years and years. You'd go to a Redkin show and it was always Sam on the stage, or for years and years and years you'd go to a Wella show and it was always the Doves on the yeah. stage. You know, I think I think it did two things. I think that um, I've never met anyone that's doing the right things who has ego. I've met many many people who are scratching to get to the top with the ego. So I think once you've made it, there's nothing to scratch for, you know. So I think that what's happened with social media, that we all have a brighter light on us and we all have a spotlight on us. So we can let go of the ego a little bit because there are paths to succeed other than Redkin has one job. Wella has one job. All these brands have one job to to, to shine. And like, you know, I mean, uh, I mean, even to bring up Sam Bricotta, like he kind of had to make his own path. Mm -hmm. That's really, 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 really difficult to do. Yeah. You know what I mean? So, you so had I, to be with a brand. You had to be with a brand. You know, so I think I think that because everyone's being validated, right. not in a gross kind of validation right. way, but 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 that we're being validated as an industry, and it's not like I want your job. But now the brands can bring on uh, a ton of people that had, you know what I mean? Uh, because mm-hmm. because the spotlight are is on a ton of people, right? So now they can bring them all on, and uh, the fight to the top is is a whole lot less. Yeah. I, I like that. And I, like I also think theory. the brands, you know, the brands can no longer gatekeep that either. True. Right? You know Social what I mean? Social media yeah. changed everything. Changed yeah. everything when yeah. it came to that. Yeah. And, and, and I think it's a really, really good thing for the industry. So I, I, you said I could ask you a question. You can ask anything because you want. Because you, you get to ask people questions all the time. And I would love to know your take on, um, so when, when a salon wants somebody to come in, the first thing they ask Like about, an educator? Yeah, an educator. Uh-huh. The first thing they ask is, let me see their social media. So what about hairstylists that are great hairstylists that maybe haven't gone that same path and they don't have the job, but they're mm-hmm. really great hairdressers and want to be educators? What have you seen with that? I mean, I don't think we see it, you know, to be honest. I mean, I, I, think, that, I think that, you know, just like, just like business cards don't have the impact that they once did, it's all about the, show, it's, it's all about the, 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 the social media profile and, and what, what you can show someone. You know, it, it, there's no longer, I mean, I'm sure you remember, you know, you, this is my work and literally yeah, in portfolio. like a, in a portfolio, right? Well, now that's all public now. So yeah. Yeah, I think it'd be really, really hard to book a job without having, with, without having that, I mean, portfolio, essentially. Yeah. You know, I mean, you needed a portfolio always. Now it's just a public portfolio. Yeah. You know, so I, I don't, it, it, it's a tough Sense. road. It's a tough road, it's right? Just a, yeah, it's a harder climb. It's a hard, mm-hmm. it's a bigger hill to climb. Yeah. And and, you know? and and to be honest, if somebody wasn't on social media, I'd be a little concerned why they're not on social media. What if they have a small following, like under 10,000? Yeah, I mean, if, if the work's there, the work's there, yeah. right? I mean, yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay, so yeah, I mean, that's that's a different conversation. But But I'd be concerned if someone's like, I'm not doing social media. You know, right. especially in this industry, yeah, I'd be they like, have to, right? I'd be like, well, what's going on? Is this something? Is this someone that I want to get involved with? If they're so mm-hmm. like militant about you know not having a social media, because I'd have a lot more questions there than if they yeah. had if they had you know a thousand followers. You know what I mean? Right. Like, we, right. we, we've brought people on the podcast that has fifteen hundred followers, mm-hmm. right? Because one, maybe their work or less, it, by the way, yeah, uh, their their work is outstanding, yeah. or their message can elevate the industry or yes. really impact somebody's life. So um, we, don't, we don't necessarily look at that number, uh, but we do look at, uh, you know. The message. What, yeah. Yeah, what, what, their, what their message is mm-hmm. to whoever they're, you know. Posting if you're for. elevating the industry yeah. and, you can, it, and if you can impact lives to, yeah. to the better, you're, you have a place yeah, in our just, spot. it's such an interesting it's it's an interesting time. time. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's in that whole shift we were talking about. You know, sure. Things are changing. Sure. Still. Absolutely. Yeah, I mean, I, well, I mean, changes always change. Mm. 
mm-hmm. right? I mean, just <laughs> look over our career. Thank. I'm just going to say thank God the Arturi brothers aren't on stage anymore representing <laughs> the industry. <laughs> <laughs> they were fun. <laughs> they were so much fun. They were yeah. fun. The, the what, what was it? The blow dryers? Yeah. <laughs> yes, that was it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That was awesome. Yeah, they <laughs> made it a party, right? They made it a party. I feel like there's a little bit of that going on yeah. on, the, on the floor. Some yeah. places, yeah, but there's, yeah. There's a little. I mean, I don't think that's ever left the industry no. necessarily, no. Yeah. But, but on top of that, there's some really good stuff going on yes. on the floor, too. Oh, it was, yeah. It's not just all of that. You yeah. know, but that goes back to it, too. Like, like the brands need attention to sell products, so bring in a show. You know, now I think, I think that we can, our show can be more education-based as opposed to like yeah. bringing the, the light, the music, and the, the hair flying yeah, everywhere. Did, you know? I didn't see yeah. the hair flying. I saw people dancing yeah. in, in front oh, of the yeah. stage, you know, yeah. and, uh, <laughs> while people were working on stage. Yeah, it's exactly. It's funny. Yeah, it's great. You know, thank you for hanging out with us. Thanks for making yeah, time so today. I know it's hard at the end of a busy day. So, uh, well, uh, you know, you. I ran up here. Yeah. See, I, you were all out of breath. Ran, I, know. I know. I thought you were nervous to talk to us, but then I saw a no. little sweat on you and stuff. <laughs> That's crazy. Yeah, so. I got, we could sit here and talk for hours. For sure. You're yeah. easy to talk to. For sure. I, too. We're 45 minutes in, so. Oh, gosh. Yeah, okay. Amazing, yeah. right? Yeah, that went fast. Sana, yeah. how can people find you? Ooh, you can find me in so many different places. But first of all, on Instagram, which is my name. So at Sana Bredo, S-O-N-N-A-B-R-A-D-O. Bredo. <laughs> Not butter. Butter. <laughs> yeah. There's also my website, which is Um, I have a membership that we didn't really get, dive into, but that's called, <clears throat> excuse me, Sharp Scissors Society. Mm. And I take those back pocket techniques that I teach on Instagram, and I expand on those. Oh, that's good. And this year, so I've got over 100 videos in there right now. Oh, wow. Video right. library. Right. And this year, I'm doing a master class. Oh, that's cool. So I'm cool. taking people through the consultation, the design process, and the finished haircut. Oh. So that's cool. And that's called Sharp Scissors Society. Um, and then, of course, Angel Blades. Of course, Angel Blades. Yeah. Which Angel we're going to go, which we're gonna go play with probably tomorrow, because it's late yes. in the day. But we'll go down and play yes. with them tomorrow. Yeah. Love that. Ah. That's awesome. And all of it's available, <coughs> excuse me, available on my website, sonabredo.com. 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 What Everything Sonabredo. Sonabredo. Sonabredo, you got yeah. it? I know got you it. There we go. Sonabredo.com. Sonabredo. Now you sound like him. He's like, he's <laughs> losing his voice. You're losing your voice. Oh, yeah. It's the end of the day. Come on, man. It's the end of the day. Give right. us a break. Uh, yeah. And unfortunately, we do have to kind of cut it short because uh, the, uh, the guys here said, you know, they want us out of here by 530. It's 534. <laughs> They're kicking <laughs> us out. Because they closed at five, but they, they, stayed, uh, they stayed for you. Yeah. Thank Sana, you. thank you yeah. so much. Thanks thank for hanging pleasure. out with us. Thank you. And uh, thank you very much for joining us on your day off. Thanks for listening. If you enjoyed this episode and you'd like to help support the podcast, share it with friends, give us a rating and drop a review to listen to all the latest podcasts. Please subscribe from your favorite podcast outlet and to stay connected on and off the show. You can follow us at hair Distry on Instagram and all other social media platforms. Thanks again. And we'll see you next time. Peace and love.